Hi, uh, big news. There's a new version of Nomad Sculpt Out, version 1.85. If you look in the bottom right corner of your Nomad, you'll see the version number. If you see 1.84, that just means you need to go to like the App Store or whatever store you're and hit the update button. That's what I had to do, and it just took a couple of seconds to update, and then you'll have the new version. In the new version, there's two new main features that are being added, and then a lot of aesthetic upgrades or changes. Upgrades is highly dependent on how you feel about them. Um, so when I first came into it, the thing I noticed is there's a lot of color added, in, especially in the right toolbar. And I'm seeing some colors associations. So I even moved some together so you can see the flatten and planar or have this like acid green text color. And that makes sense. They're groups because they're very similar tools. Um, you may be on the fence about like all the pairings, but um, it definitely helps like visually separate a lot of the tools. Um, you'll even see some icon updates. The mask and cell mask got a whole icon redesign. And uh, I'm a fan. I was definitely, I always kind of like cell mask would get lost to me sometimes. So happy about that. Yeah, so I'm not sure about the color groupings, but the second thought I had when I saw this, I was like, are we going to be able to customize our own colors? Can I change my toolbar colors to to group icons or group the tools into my own color themes? Um, that would be really cool. Um, I haven't found that that's the case though. Like I tapped here and I was hoping to find an edit button or a color swatch that I could change the color. Um, and then I went into these menus as well. And I haven't found anything. My feeling is no, you, you won't be able to change these as of yet. Um, so I don't know, but that would be an awesome organizational like feature to be able to just color code my own tools, how I like to use them. If you're listening, uh, that'd be cool. Yeah, so the, the main three new icons are down here at the bottom. Quad remesher, hide, and face group. So the hide is really just uh, an action of the face group tool, but um, interesting in terms of like the design. Like I felt like quad remesher just fell right in line with the, the outline icon design, but then hide was like a dot matrix look, and then the face group is a flat multicolor icon. So, I mean, I'll easily be able to locate those two icons, hide and face group for sure. Um, but yeah, they sort of diverged from the main two icon styles, the 3D look and the, the outline icon look. So those are the main visual updates. If you go to mask, you can see that previously I used to find these in the menu, but they have a floating, I don't know if you can necessarily move this, but they have the floating icon tray or tool tray here. So that is another kind of uh, UI update. So let's talk about the main two feature updates, which is quad remesher and face group. So you might see a shopping cart icon next to your quad remesher. Um, when I opened the app, I realized this is a feature like add-on, a purchase you paid to have this feature. Um, it's $16, $15.99, I believe. And I bought it right away because I'm at this point I'm teaching Nomad, so I need to kind of know what this is. So I bought it immediately and I've used quad remeshers before. So I kind of know the power uh, that they offer, but you you be the judge for yourself. I'm gonna I'm gonna walk through an aha moment I had, and if you were on the fence about purchasing it, like maybe that will get you to say like, yeah, that's an that's something I want. And surprisingly, it was used in combination with base group. So I think the fact that these two features are being added, but they're also paired really well together, like. The aha moment was specifically me using face group and then using quad remesher and realizing like, oh, oh, I can see how this can be really powerful. So let me just turn on face group. First thing you're gonna notice is that like suddenly your matte cap color or whatever color you're using changes to a new color. Um, you need to come over to the left tool strip here and you'll see we have some contextual new buttons, patch dot relax lock plus radius. Um, a side note is that I've known about face group for at least a couple months now because I started seeing YouTube videos about face group and I was like, I don't know where this tool is. Like I don't have this tool. And I realized that they were using the, the web tool. So there's a nomad web assembly, which is just basically a demo of, it's almost like they're pre-flighting the upcoming features of nomad through this web version of nomad. So you could, I'll put the link in the description. 
you can access it through like your Safari browser on your iPad. So you could still be using the web demo on your iPad. So you can use your like Apple Pencil if that's the case. But yeah, for months, there's been access to base groups if you knew how to find this website. Um, so you can check that out. I'll put the link in the description. Anyways, why I got on that tangent was that I had seen this and then I saw the relax tool. And let's first talk about the patch and then we'll get to that. So the reason why it switched colors is because face groups are defined dominantly by the color. Like that's the thing you notice most about them. So if you don't like the color you've chosen, you can tap on here and come in and pick a new color. If you don't like seeing any of these colors, you can actually pick white and it'll, it'll show through to your original matte cap color or whatever color you get. So I actually like that myself. Um, so I'm gonna leave my base starting patch color as white and then I'm gonna add a new color. Again, you can change this to whatever you want. I'm gonna go with something less hot than red. I'll go with like a cooler blue. So now to use this, you just need to go to dot, and this is like a pencil brush. You can use lasso and polygon as well, but let's start here since it's brand new. I'm just gonna make some shape that I can fill in. So this is a lot like a mask and it's face groups is very related to mask because that's what they are. So right now I have one um, new face group drawn in and this will, if you want to know sort of like why I would need this is I have a single piece of geometry, but I want to make selectable regions within that piece of geometry. I can use these colors because if I tap on my mask now and I just tap into this, if I tap into this um, face group shape with my mask tool, I just need to, oh here, you'll see that it's almost working as a mask masking my mask tool. So now I have a selection, but it's very, it's very pixelated. And that is because if I turn on my wireframe, we are working from this quad mesh. So when you bring in a primitive sphere, this is what the mesh looks like. It looks really nice, but it's very pixelated when you paint these face groups on it. Cause you can see it's filling the entire square. But when I was watching those face group demos, I was like, I was like, when I saw them using the relax tool, I was like, oh my gosh, that is such a sharp, like, I really hope I can make use of how sharp that selection is. So if you're used to using masks, you'll know that like you really have to increase the density of your mesh to like the millions to really get a sharp edge because the higher density your mesh is, the sharper your mask can be direct relationship. So it's like you got to go from like 1080 to like 8K TV, like that kind of jump to see like a really sharp. Here I haven't increased the geometry at all, but watch when I use the relax tool. Look at how, let me turn off this as well. You can see how versus the starting edge and just this relax, how how huge a difference this makes. Look how, like I said, it's so sharp an edge that I'm like, I hope that equals, like I can, I can create shapes from that shape. So I'm just gonna keep going over and over this because I'm gonna hit the undo button and just show you like over time how much you can relax this shape. So I'm gonna just show you quickly um, a comparison. So I'm going to turn on my mesh. We looking at that. Um, I'm gonna go to my mask tool real quick. Oh no, I'm trying to think of the fastest way. There's like a fill, I'll just do it this way. So I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna invert, and now I'm gonna go to my gizmo tool. This is a way that you can extrude things. So I'm gonna extrude, and this is very just like normal mask stuff. And you can see, you can see that I have still a pixelated edge from from some of the shape, even though I made a very sharp selection. Um, when I started to pull up, I'm still gonna get some of that that trans like obviously they shifted the geometry edge to accommodate the smooth, but when you extrude, you don't get you don't get a smooth edge. So let me undo and turn off face groups again. And now I want to turn off my mask, clear it, and let's just zoom in here. So I just happened to be in at this stage when I was like, let me try this quad remesher. And I went up here, I just set it to 70K, 70,000. I just hit remesh. And right here, I want you to watch the edge of this shape. So right here, I had a huge like, whoa moment. I don't know how you reacted when you saw this, but I had a direct impact on the retopology of this. Like when they when it went to quad remesh, like, it took into account the shape I made. Like I can define how my model gets retopologized. 
and there's definitely some problems here. Like I don't like here, it looks really clean up until this area when I have some problems down here. I have some problems over here, lots of like weirdness. So I was like, can I clean that up using my relax tool? Can I come through some of these areas? Just relax maybe a little more and it's not looking great, but I was like, let me quad remesh. And I didn't even change the value. Kept it at 70,000. I just hit quad remesh and boom. I was like, oh, that cleaned it up. Let me just keep finding problem areas and trying that trick. So here, like all around now I have quads. They're rectangular quads. There's no, so this is so exciting to me. Like now I can go to my mask, do the same thing that I was doing earlier. You saw me extrude and the edge was really rough, but now I've cleaned up this entire shape so I can invert, do the same thing, go to my gizmo tool and now grab extrude. And it's so clean, like that shape versus the first time I extruded. Let me turn off my mask, clear it, hide my, turn off this. Like, I don't know if I can ever do that with like a regular mask. I would have to go so high in the density of my mesh to get this sharp an edge that I'm just like, and I've never wanted to turn on my wireframe so much now that this kind of, this super clean topology, the, the thing that people are constantly seeking in like blender tools, especially if you ever watch somebody make a head model, like the, the shape that surrounds the eye sockets and the mouth on a head mesh are just like this, like this perfect, like, you know, like the edge here is like perfectly surrounding the shape. So if I had an eye socket and it was, and I had a mesh that surrounded, like wrapped perfectly around that shape, that would be a great, that would be a great topology. And here we now have this. So I don't even have any edge loops along this wall here, this kind of area, but there are, there is like a, if you do an extraction, a way to add edge loop divisions. For here, I can just quad remesh. It's going to soften, so I didn't do anything. I'm just gonna hit remesh one more time. So it's starting to, starting to soften the, the shape here. So if you weren't looking for that, you may have to figure out how to mask this before you run the quad remesher. And I haven't tried that yet, but that might retain the sharpness on the bottom. You can see that it's very sharp on the top though. Like that's unaffected. So let me turn off this and I'm going to go to my smooth tool because I realized that when I open the smooth settings, there are settings now for the face groups. And I had it on auto and I was like, what's stable? Let me try some of these things. And I started to paint and this just seemed like a normal smoothing. So I undid and I actually switched it from auto to on. And then I started smoothing and it treated the top edge like it was masked. Like I can't, I can't blur that top edge, but I can blur everything else. And I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like I can, I didn't have to even set a mask, which wouldn't be hard because of these face groups are so easy to fill the mask inside of there. But here I was able to get this super sharp edge. And when I turn on the wireframe, like I say, I love looking at the wireframes now since quad remesher, because I didn't really like the look of voxel remeshing. I was like, when you first bring in that initial sphere, from the primitives, um, it has a really nice mesh. And I was like, oh, I gotta destroy that beautiful look with voxel remeshing. But now I love turning on the wireframe to see. So it's really because of that relax tool, that really smooth edge that I can achieve this. And because quad remesher takes into account my shape, my very clean, smooth edge shape. So I can achieve this shape, which I don't know, you would have to, the weight of your, the density and weight, meaning like the, the size, the file size of your geometry would be so high to get this, this level of sharpness. Um, it's great. This is really cool. And then I can take, you know, I can go into face groups, keeps collapsing my thing. Face group, go to mask. I can fill in this again. Just make sure you got everything. Oops. It just matters where you start. If I tap outside of my face group, then obviously it's going to fill that. Area. Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing. Actually, I'm not going to do the same thing because now I'm going to come up to my mask and there's a lot of stuff in here, but I have it set to shell, which means when I hit the extract button, it will create a new shape, sort of a, a thickness, almost like an armor plate of whatever I have selected. So my height is 0.1. Um, one thing to note is there's this edge loop new feature down here. And when I went to 
height and mask, I don't have access to that. So I had to keep it on height if I wanted that. And then it comes by default checked for auto edge loop. I unchecked it and set it to five. Uh, I also set my smoothness here to 100%. And that's pretty much all you needed to focus on. So I'm gonna hit extract now and I wanna hide my original. So if you're wondering why my edge loops were, or what happens when I set my edge loops to five, this is where it comes in. So there's five edge loops along this side. And the topology on this thing is so pretty. Like this looks so good. This looks like it came out of Blender or some other, you know, desktop 3D program. Very sexy to look at. And yeah, that's, you know, they worked hand in hand. It was like I drew a face group and I relaxed it, smoothed it. Then I I used quad remesher to apologize my my geometry. And it that's the game changer, is it totally wraps around your shapes. So you can make all kinds, you could make a head model and then draw in your shapes so that you have a place to to bring in not that we have ways to join edge edge loops but you can obviously mesh like join them boolean them together and now remesh things so this just creates really clean topology really sharp edges and stuff like that clearly i'm excited about this and you should be too it's going to really improve it. I mean, we're getting closer to a world where who knows, we'll probably have hard surface modeling tools long term. I don't know. It just this tool is impressing me all the time. The updates are always like people are asking very low hanging fruit stuff, but he's just like, I'm gonna, you know, give you a whole I'm giving you things you didn't know you needed necessarily. And now I'm like, well I, I love this. I think I do need this. I don't know what else would have what other improvements would have made a, a good update but this is definitely like far exceeding what i had hoped for really cool stuff i haven't figured out in my head all of what this means like what other applications i can i can show you guys about this yet but yeah i've only been using it for a couple hours so i hope that sparks some some interesting ideas for how how to retopologize your meshes in a way that set you up for success on something some other thing that you plan to maybe boolean together two shapes um interesting stuff yeah leave in the comments if you found something you know you discovered something about 1.85 1 i'm just trying to like dig deep this you know there's a lot to unpack i'm sure anyways have fun with it hopefully i know this wasn't really a well-structured video but you know brand new update um hasn't been out for even a full day yet so hopefully uh hopefully there's lots more like like aha moments with this all right um you know i screwed this up last video i said you know keep making stuff uh my channel's making things so i didn't even get my tagline right all right so this time uh yeah let's let's do it keep making things and i'll see you next time